and welcome. In today's video, I'll be making an 1880s bustle. From this pattern, ooh, that's a glare, TV163, 1887 Imperial Tournure. French people, please don't yell at me. I chose, she has this bustle in a regular size or a larger size, which she calls Imperial. I chose the larger size because I want a bigger bustle. I actually have it on the dress form to give you a little sneak peek of it. It's hanging in a little bit because my dress form has no butt. This video is my first experimentation with a vlog style of video, so hope it all goes well. Enjoy. So the first step in making my bustle is to cut up my pattern pieces. We have the inner back, the back, the front, the waistband, and the ruffle. I'm using this cotton sheeting fabric. It's a heavy duty, just plain weave cotton to construct my bustle. Here are all my pieces cut out. And then I also serge them as well. And then I'm going to mark the darts and the boning channels with this friction fine line pencil. You can either use this eraser or you can use the iron. And then the marks go away with heat. I have now marked all my boning channels and darts and my hems. I'll zoom in so you can actually see them. And this little mark here is indicated by the pattern and I skip over this with my needle and so I can insert the boning into these channels. So I'm going to set the back, the front and the inner back all aside for now. Then I am going to now sew together these three ruffle pieces as well as hem them. Now I have finished my ruffle. I've seamed all the pieces together and I've hemmed them. I also hem the top and bottom of this inner back piece. I will now set them aside and sew in the darts on the front pieces as well as hem the front pieces. I finished sewing the darts in the front pieces as well as hemmed, this is the front edge, that's the center front, and then these will attach, these will attach to the back piece, which is my next part I'm going to do, is sew up the center back seam right here, and then inside my boning channels, which I marked, I'm going to sew the boning channels, for which I am using just this bias tape, and then that's just going to be right there in the middle. Here is my bustle with all the tape sewn in, and you can even see that, because it's the outside here, you can even see just with the tapes how it's wanting to keep its bustle shape already. This is how the tapes look from the outside. And right over, there you go. Right over here, this is where I skipped stitches. And so I can insert the boning in later on. But because this is going to get sewn to the front, you can't insert the boning in through here because there'll be a weak point in the seam. So that's all bad. So I did it in the boning channel. So I'm going to clip all these little threads that you see and then as well as iron the marks out. Here is the bustle all ironed, the back part of the bustle. And the next step is to, that's the bottom part of the back, is to attach the ruffle. So I'm just going to match the middle of the ruffle to the center back seam and then gather 
outward from there. So I ended up pleating the ruffle as opposed to gathering it and the ruffle will, the pleats will face away from the center back. The ruffle is all pinned in place, then I have to go and sew it. And this back piece will be done, and then I can attach it to the inner back as well as to the fronts. Here is the ruffle sewn on. This is why this particular style of bustle is called a lobster back, because you see it looks like a lobster tail. So now the back is done. I can attach the front as well as the inner back. The inner back piece, this right here, is what keeps, is what it adds tension to the bustle and so the wires over here is what makes the shape and then this is condensing that tension. It's basically pulling the back bustle taut and it also keeps it against your backside. So I'm going to attach wrong sides together, this front piece, and this inter back piece right here. Then I will come back. Here is the inner back, back, and front all attached together. Then I have to attach the other front to the back and then this in inner back piece gets pulled and attached at the side seam. So you see here there is an ex there is extra room in the back piece which will be filled by the boning and this inner back piece keeps the back piece, all the bustle, where it should be. Once I sewed the inner back to the other front, this is how it looks. I'm trying to do this one-handed. I just turn the bustle right side out and there we go. There we go. Voila! The bustle. Here is the front. This is the inside view here. These are the two fronts. This is the inner back and beneath it is the back. Which obviously once the boning will be in it, will all bustle out. And here's how it looks from the front. Again. With the boning, this is how it will look, all poofed out like that. So the next step before we add the boning is to add the waistband. It's just going to, that's the waistband over there, um, right sides to right sides, half an inch seam allowance, and then half an inch seam allowance on the edges too. Because instead of adding a button, um, hook button closure or hooks and eyes, I am going to make it the waistband more of a draw brand, drawstring and for which I'm going to use some of this one fourth inch full tape I have over there just to make it adjustable. The waistband is now sewn on. What I'm going to do is cut down the seam allowance here, fold the waistband over like so and then top stitch it. After that, then I will add the drawstring. I finish the waistband. Here's how it looks. And then I have my drawstring here on a very large and blunt tapestry needle. And then I'm just going to weave it through the waistband here. And then tie it off. I'm going to make the drawstring. I normally make my drawstrings 10 inches bigger than my waist, and so that gives me five inches on each side to tie it into a bow. And then the final step will be to add the boning. So I put in the drawstring, but I couldn't use this twill tape because it ended up being way too thick for the tight channel. And I even broke 
my brand new bone all. So that was disappointing. By, but I instead used this three millimeter macrame cord and knotted it at the end, and that was fine. And the almost the final step is adding the boning. If you're using a truly Victorian pattern, I highly recommend she has um, boning kits for her bustles, her crinolines, her hoop skirts. They come in pre-cut length and pre-tipped, and they fit perfectly into the channels of the bustle. So, highly recommend. I've made, oh my gosh, how many? Three hoop skirts and like big crinoline 1860s hoop skirts and cutting all those bones and tipping, no, not fun, not fun. So the next time you see the bustle, it'll actually have some structure and look like a bustle. All the bones are now in. And then the last step I did was focus. The opening for the bone I had to hand sew, which I did using some um, upholstery, upholstery thread. Make sure to use really strong thread, especially on these top three bones here, um, because they're the ones that are the most curved. They're going to want to come out the most. Um, warning, it really hurts your hands. But my bustle is now done. Thank you.